Hey guys, and welcome to another video by artincontext.org. This is a space where we cover various art related topics. My name is Matt, and in today's tutorial, we will be looking at how to paint different types of leaves using watercolor paint. So with that being said, let's get into it. Now there's something really delicate and beautiful about leaves, and this is because they come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. They also change in color due to the season. And in this particular tutorial, what we will be doing is we will not only look at a variety of different types of leaves, but as we do so, we'll also look at how to create various colorations that range in the spectrum between autumn and summer palettes. Um, so as we go through this tutorial, we'll learn not only how to paint um, and shape different types of leaves, uh, but in doing so we'll also learn how to create these more unique pairings between color and leaf species. So with that being said, we're going to start with something a little unique known as the black locust leaf. Now the black locust leaf is quite a commonly uh, occurring leaf um, shape and type. The species is mostly found within eastern United States or western United States and what we'll find is that this leaf type shape tends to be quite small and an arrowhead shape. So with most of these leaves they tend to be an arrowhead shape um, but however the distinctions tend to be between the width and length. In this case, the black locust leaf shape is quite a small circular arrowhead shape. And what we'll also find is that they form along a single vine and have this symmetrical pairing along either side of that vine. Now, rather than painting this leaf species green, we're gonna start with a more autumn style palette. And this is where we can be a little bit playful and start to consider um, our color mixing and how to kind of create this unique uh, soft red brown um, tone within our leaf shape. So this is where we want to consider how leaves start to transition from these deep um, green colors as they slowly change into these uh, deeper browns and reds. And this is where we can start playing around with how we make our mix, our color mix, um, and ultimately how we form these leaf shapes in that symmetrical uh, structure. So what we wanna do is we also wanna consider what type of brush we use for these different leaf species. In this case, what we wanna use is a more round brush. Uh, this is a watercolor brush that is quite thick at the base, but then becomes slightly more narrow as it forms towards the tip. Now having a round brush is gonna be really helpful when we paint leaves because because what happens is as we apply pressure to the brush we can kind of disperse uh, the bristles of the brush and therefore spreading uh, paint onto the paper which will allow it to cover a larger surface area um, and the reason why we do this is because we want to have this moment of light pressure so we have this narrow tip and then we press slightly harder to create a larger surface area to bring more uh, rounding qualities to the center um, feature of these leaf shapes and then slowly soften our pressure again to bring it back to a thin edge or a thin tip at the base of the leaf. Now this process of making these arrowhead shapes is going to be used in a lot of different leaf species that we'll paint. However, when we are painting smaller leaf shapes using the single stroke action of light pressure then harder pressure to create a larger surface area in the center of the leaf shape or in the body of the leaf and then lightening our pressure again in a single stroke as we bring it out to a narrow tip um, is going to be a great way to establish these leaf shapes um, by the uh, application of one single stroke. Now this is where we can actually start to think about the coloration of our black locust leaf species and this is where we want to consider how autumn colors tend to uh, move towards these brown colors, these deep reds. So considering mixing some reds and browns can be a good starting point for how to establish these base layers of more autumn like colors. Now at this point what we want to do is we want to start loading our brush, our rounded tip brush and then we want to start actually applying these single strokes again making sure that as we allow the paintbrush to touch the paper we starting with a soft hand and then we slowly um, apply more pressure to create a wider base and then transitioning into lighter pressure again as we come to the tip of each of these leaves. Now again the black locust leaf it kind of runs in these rows along a single vine so what we can do is we can actually paint these shapes first before adding in the vine. So the idea is to basically paint them in pairs running in a vertical direction or at least running along the same plane or line and then allowing this little bit of space to be between each of the pairs making sure they are mirrored in a single um, orderly fashion. Um, and as we get to the top of these pairings what we can do is we can actually paint one last um, black locust leaf that faces upward from that pairing 
uh, that runs in a single line. Now once we have left that spacing open that runs between these rows of black locust leaves, uh, what we then can proceed to do is paint in that stem or that single vine um, and then slowly start to paint in the smaller branches that connect to each of these leaves. Now the black locust vine or stem is quite a thin stem. This leaf shape again tends to be quite small so the branch that it's connected to um, also tends to be quite small and thin and this is something we just want to bear in mind. Um, painting leaves beforehand often is always a better way to proceed with a uh, leaf painting and this is because you can establish the leaves first and then be a little bit more free in terms of how the vines or stems and branches move in between the leaves. Now make sure you take your time with your black locust leaf painting. You just want to make sure you have these small little wider or more circular arrowhead shapes. Um, you want to make sure that your coloration has a good mix between reds and browns. Again, these autumn colors don't just have a single coloration to them. So for instance, we want to think about the spectrum of colors and how they shift from these deeper greens in summer. Um, and as they come to autumn, they start to shift to more yellows and browns, uh, even have hints of red in them. Um, but when we start shifting to more winter colors, this is where we start to see these deeper oaky brown um, colors within the leaves, which we will explore in the next leaf painting. So feel free to play around with different types of color combinations um, and try to consider how these seasons will always have an effect on the coloration within the leaf. Again, autumn leaves will always um, start to move away from these green to yellows, browns, um, and reds but then ultimately these winter colors will have these more deeper darker browns now we're going to start transitioning into a more classic uh, more familiar type of leaf and this is the beech leaf now the beech leaf is a very popular type of leaf shape it has that classical spearheaded shape it looks very similar to many oak shaped leaves um, this tree can be found in your backyard whether you live in europe asia or north america so as we proceed to paint this leaf let's stick to our autumn palette for now uh, but we can start to shift to a little bit more of a deep a brown where it starts to look a little bit more wintry um, and this is where we can consider our mix of colors already where we can start maybe integrating little bits of black into our brown mix uh, and that way we get this more deeper dark um, oaky uh, coloration within our beech leaf. Now the beech leaf is a more classical leaf shape and what I mean by classical is it has that general football shape or otherwise known as a spearheaded shape and we can start this painting process with our round brush where we just start to create that general um, football like shape um, what we do want to do is we're going to start working a little bit more quicker and we want to start using another smaller brush now the idea with the beech leaf is that it has these small little ridges on the edges so what we want to do is as we paint in the entire leaf shape in that classic football shape or spearheaded shape we are then going to work quite quickly whilst the paint is still wet where we actually take a smaller brush and start to pull the paint outwardly in these small little strokes um, and in doing so we'll create these little spiky ridges that run along the edging of the leaf. Now the idea here is to create these football shapes with a larger brush um, but what we do want to do is we want to keep the uh, leaf as wet as we can. We want to keep the paint wet and in doing so that way we can effectively pull the paint outwardly along the edging of the leaf and create these little spiky ridges. Now with the watercolor medium working whilst the paint is still wet is also a great way to make these very unique marks that are very specific to the watercolor medium. So another thing we can do while the paint is still wet in our leaf is we can take a dry brush and this way we can start to make these marks um, these highlight marks within the leaf where we start lifting up the paint with a dry brush now in doing so we can make these strokes within the leaf and this is just a fun way to kind of create a little bit more texture within the leaf and ultimately giving it a little bit of variation between highlights and more shadowed uh, areas so this is just a very specific unique that we can apply to our leaf painting process and continue with other leaves um, and it just works really well with the watercolor medium now another thing that is unique to the watercolor medium that is a great way to create a little bit more variety in terms of tonal variation um, within the leaf is when we work whilst the leaf is still wet uh, we can start to integrate um, some darker painterly marks within that wet surface and what this is going to do is it's going to allow the color to disperse into uh, the wet surface and ultimately create this seamless integration between lighter colors and darker colors so for instance if you make a light beach painting um, and keep the surface wet um, you can then add some darker marks near the base or along the edges 
um, and that just creates these little transitions, these seamless transitions between colors, which is just another way to create um, tonal variation and texture within your leaf painting. Now these leaves you can repeat as many times as you like. Um, once we have done that, uh, we're gonna then, uh, similar to the black locust leaf, we can start to work in the vine and the stems around our leaves and then seamlessly connect them to one another um, with some strokes of brown paint um, as we paint in our stems. Now again, this process you can continue until you have made various beech leaves um, to your satisfied amount. Um, but something to bear in mind that as we continue with this painting process, we'll find that some of our previously painted leaves might still take a while to dry. And once they have dried, you can go back to them and add more details as you like. So for instance, the black locust leaves, we can add in a little bit more um, refined details. And this is where we can work in some vein structures or some vein lines that disperse throughout each of the leaves. Now we're going to transition onto something a little bit different and this is where we look at how to paint something that is a little bit more branch focus um, and has a unique coloration. So we're going to learn how to paint some berries on a branch. Now berries on a branch aren't necessarily a leaf to paint, however they pair really well with various leaves when you are interested in painting a variety of leaves or a variety of different plant structures um, and putting them together in a single artwork. Now with berries on a branch, they're super simple to paint, they're really fun and they're really nice to integrate into your natural landscapes or as mentioned before, a larger plant based artwork. Now the way in which we start this process is we're going to start by drawing the branches. Now when it comes to drawing these small delicate branches, we want to consider shifting to a smaller and thinner brush. Um, and this is where we can start to capture these really delicate lines and how they start to deviate into different uh, smaller branches. So when you think about painting or drawing branches, something you want to think about is how the general structure as a whole um, looks. Uh, together. So for instance, branches have these moments where they start to deviate in different directions and a good way to define them is almost as if we are looking at a crack in the ground. Uh, they also have these more geometric um, transitions and deviations in different directions. So we also want to bear that in mind as we paint in these branches. We can also start by painting a slightly larger main branch that kind of runs um, through the center of uh, these smaller thinner branches that deviate in different directions. Now once we have done so something really fun to consider is the coloration of berries and berries are quite strange in terms of how they tend to have these more wilder colors or more vivid colors which is ultimately what makes them stand out so much within a natural landscape. Now there are moments where we have these more blue style berries and black style berries but there are also these purple style berries um, and this purple tends to be quite a deep purple. So what we're going to do is we're going to start playing around with um, our color mixing. And this is where we can start integrating some blacks and browns uh, into a combination of purple. Now in doing so, you want to always consider your ratios as well. In this case, we really want to make sure that that purple color uh, is maintained within the berries. Uh, so in doing so, we want to consider making the ratio of our blacks and browns uh, slightly less to that um, of the purple. Now, as we proceed to paint in these berries, we want to basically make these small little teardrop shapes. Um, and basically, we want to just form these little teardrop shapes around the smaller deviating branches that stem from that larger um, connecting branch. Now again, berries aren't necessarily leaves, but they work really well as this contextualizing feature or this additional feature that works um, beautifully in natural landscapes and pairs really well with other leaf um, paintings and drawings. So it's really nice to understand how to not only paint leaves, but also how to integrate other um, natural structures uh, within a leaf painting that kind of work well and add to the artwork as a whole. Um, these are also just really simple to paint and really fun and it's a great way to fill space. So it's a nice little trick to know when you are interested in terms of filling space and adding a little bit more nuance and variation within your natural structures. In this way, ultimately adding a little bit more of a variation within your paintings and landscapes and so on. Now we're going to slowly transition into something a little bit more familiar 
both in color palette as well in species and this is the northern oak leaf. Now the northern oak leaf is one of many oak species or oak leaf species um, however this one has that iconic Christmas tree shape where it has these larger segments from the base which become smaller and ultimately form into one segment at the top. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start to shift into a different color palette and this is where we're going to start considering these more summery colors where we can start creating um, various greens or uh, trying out different greens uh, and in this case we're going to start to create something a little bit more natural a little bit more neutral as well where we start to lean a little bit more towards these deeper dark greens um, and this also just looks really nice with the northern oak leaf um, it gives it that iconic uh, deep dark green um, coloration um, and that's what we want to achieve for this particular leaf so what we want to do is we want to start considering our ratios once again and when we start to look towards making these deeper greens um, that look more natural that look neutral that look like they actually exist within a natural landscape we want to start considering integrating blacks and browns into the ratio making sure however that we maintain a higher ratio um, of green uh, compared to that of blacks and browns but this is a good way to get those deeper and warmer qualities within a color so in this case try to play around with mixing black browns and greens and ultimately trying to capture that very deep olivey green color now once you have done so the way in which we're going to proceed is we're going to start working again with our larger round brushes and this is where we start to form the general outline and shape of the northern oak leaf now it's important to consider the fact that leaves often are quite symmetrical so in nature often things aren't symmetrical but when it comes to leaves they tend to be very symmetrical and in the case of leaves with segments similar to that of the northern oak leaf uh, where these uh, segments um, kind of uh, mirror each other on each side of the leaf um, or separated from the main vein or stem that runs through the center of the leaf we want to make sure that they are um, the same in terms of scale um, and form and ultimately how they start to become smaller as the oak leaf moves towards the top now the northern oak leaf does have that iconic christmas tree shape so that's something to bear in mind in terms of how we form this leaf um, and it could be described as a leaf that does have uh, six segments or three segments on each side but each segment gets smaller as it starts to shift towards the top of the leaf now again this is where we simply want to just take our time uh, working with our round brush making sure we capture the shape um, it's always good to look at reference material in terms of just assisting you in your mark making process and this way you have a little bit more of an accurate representation of this specific leaf um, we do want to make sure that again we fill the entire leaf um, making sure that we work the outline um, of the leaf first and then ultimately filling the entire leaf with our darker, uh, deeper green color. Now again, utilizing the watercolor medium in terms of how to represent various tonal uh, values within the uh, leaf painting, what we can do is we can work quite swiftly whilst the leaf is still wet. Now this is where we want to start working with our smaller brush again to create those ridges along the edges of each of those segments um, on either side of the leaf. Um, but then we can also start to add in some darker greens whilst the leaf is still wet. And again, this is just a great way to create some tonal variation within the surface of the leaf and ultimately giving it a little bit more um, texture and three dimensionality. However, do make sure that whilst the leaf is still wet that you work with a thinner and smaller brush to pull some paints out along the edges to create that spiky ridge along the outer edges of each of the segments within the northern oak leaf. Now once you understand the general process you can proceed to then add in the stem which tends to be quite thin um, as it connects to the base of the leaf. Uh, once you understand this general process um, and you understand how to use uh, the medium while it's still wet to create these contextualizing features such as the little spiky um, ridges along the edging of each of the segments in the leaf you can then proceed to make and replicate um, this leaf and make as many as you like uh, playing around with size playing around with connecting them to a single branch but ultimately this is how we paint the northern oak leaf um, and this is how we work with creating those more neutral and deeper green colorations within the leaf now sticking with these summary um, um, plants what we're going to do is we're going to shift to something a little bit different known as the ponytail palm leaves now these leaves are somewhat um, different in terms of shape uh, they're a little bit more narrow and elongated 
um, and what happens is as they grow they tend to flop over and this is because they are quite long so they have these very unique curved um, and kind of twisting qualities. Um, they're really simple to paint, they're really fun to paint, and again, they work really well with other plants and leaf species. Um, what's really nice about this particular leaf species is that it tends to have this lighter green and starts to shift towards a more um, softer and more summery quality um, that is quite synonymous with a more tropical look. So we can start to think about our coloration at this point where we start to think about our ratios. Um, and in order to get some of that softer, more lighter olive green, a good suggestion is to start working with yellows. Um, yellows are a great way to create something a little bit more similar to blades of grass uh, and capture that really soft um, and light vibrant green. And that's basically what we want to do. We want to get something that not only looks natural but again is still um, quite light in its green palette. So as you work with your ratios remember to always maintain a higher percentage of green that way we maintain that green hue and that overall a green quality within the plant but this is where we can start to consider lightening that green with more natural tones such as yellows and whites and this is a great way to not only keep the green um, still a natural tone something that looks uh, realistic in terms of um, coming from a natural landscape but ultimately still um, maintaining that green quality um, so consider your ratios in terms of mixing and then what we're going to do is we're going to work with a a thinner brush and this is where we want to consider uh, using something like a cat tongue watercolor brush uh, this tends to be kind of like a medium uh, thin brush between a thicker round brush and then a really thin brush that's used for fine details the idea is that we want to load our brushes with our green paint mix and then we're going to proceed to work in these marks that kind of capture this ribbon like formation so when you think about a ribbon as it starts to twist you can see how it becomes more narrow in its structure and then as it unravels or it untwists it becomes thicker again and this is something we want to think about in terms of how the structure of this particular leaf uh, flows and is formed um, as we proceed to paint in these different leaves um, these leaves aren't necessarily symmetrical along a single stem but they do droop downward as they tend to get quite long to the point where gravity has an effect on them and ultimately causes them to start arcing downwardly um, we also want to consider the edges of the leaves or the tip of the leaf um, and they become uh, very narrow to a point again. Uh, you can play around with the directions and the deviations of each of these leaves in terms of which way they flow but ultimately you want to make sure that they arc downwardly um, and keeping that ribbon like bend within the overall structure of each of these leaves. Uh, this you can continue until you feel you are satisfied with how many are present on a single uh, stem that runs through the center of each of these leaves. Um, but this is a different type of leaf. It's really unique, it's really fun, really simple to paint and it pairs really well uh, with other type of naturalistic leaf and plant-like structures. Now we're going to start moving on to the next leaf and this next leaf is known as the betel leaf. Now the betel leaf, very similar to most leaf structures, uh, takes on that spearhead form. However, the betel leaf is very singular in the sense that it does have um, a very similar width um, near the base and near the edges. So it doesn't necessarily have a larger and rounded base. Um, so what we will do is we can maintain the light quality of green coloration where we again can start playing around with integrating yellows into our green uh, to ultimately not only lighten the green but to maintain a naturalistic light quality of green. As we do so what we want to do is we want to achieve more of a football like shape so again because it does have that iconic spearhead shape but isn't necessarily rounded um, uh, near the base or more narrow near the tip we do want to make sure that the tip and the base are quite similar uh, in terms of width um, and as well in terms of edging. Now what we can do is similar to that of the black locust leaves is the betel leaves also grow along a single stem and they kind of grow symmetrical uh, in these rows or in these pairs. Uh, so what we can do is we can work with a smaller brush where we paint in these leaf structures making sure they are painted in rows of two or pairs um, and ultimately with one leaf that runs perpendicular or is placed perpendicularly um, at the top of those rows and points directly up. Um, ultimately that top leaf should always connect to the center branch that runs through the rows of leaves and this is a classic 
uh, or a reoccurring theme in terms of how leaves are structured on branches. It's the case uh, for the black locust leaves and other leaf species um, and it is most certainly the case for the betel leaf. So similar to the black locust leaf what we're doing is a very similar thing however these leaves tend to have more of a football shape where the black locust leaf has a little bit more of a rounded and wider base um, and has a little bit more of an iconic spearheaded shape. Again keeping in theme with the watercolor techniques that we have learned you can also play around with uh, color variations um, and tonal variations in terms of integrating colors into those painted leaves whilst they are still wet um, and this way you can create those seamless transitions between lighter and darker greens and then ultimately you can work with a thinner brush and proceed to paint in the branch that runs through the center of those rows and ultimately connects to that top leaf. The branches of the betel leaf are quite thin um, and this is true for both the branches that connect to the uh, leaves themselves but also the branch that runs directly through um, the rows of these leaves. Now we're going to move on to our last leaf um, and this is again another iconic and classic leaf type. Um, what we will be painting now is the iconic maple leaf. What we'll also do is we're going to shift to a more yellow autumn color. Um, again, the color spectrum always changes in terms of how the seasonal changes have an effect on the coloration within these various leaves. And it's also really fun to consider what kinds of colors work really well with what species of leaf. So for instance, the maple leaf is really um, well associated with an autumn season. So learning how to paint this leaf in its autumn colors is a really fun exercise. Now, when we start considering the more uh, lighter autumn colors this is where we can start leaning more towards the yellow um, what we do want to consider is that the yellows present within the leaves aren't always a, a true yellow they do have hints of brown in them so what we want to do is we want to kind of achieve this golden yellow and this is where we want to start mixing little bits of brown maybe hints of black um, some yellow and maybe even hints of orange. Now again when you want to maintain a more dominant color within the ratios you always want to make sure that that color um, is more present within the color mix. So for instance when we start to think about the color variation um, or ratio uh, between our browns and yellows, um, blacks and oranges, we do want to make sure that our yellows are the strongest or the, at least the most present color within that mix. Now similar to the northern oak leaf, the maple leaf also has these various segmentations. Uh, in this case, this maple leaf um, has five segments um, and is kind of uh, in the position of a star. However, these segments uh, different to that of the northern oak leaf are actually smaller near the base and become larger as they move towards the end or the tip of the leaf where the last segment is actually the largest. Uh, we want to make sure that there's kind of this symmetrical nature again between these segments. So we want to make sure that there are these pairings of two smaller segments near the base. Um, then there's another two segments above that that are slightly larger and then kind of uh, shifting and transitioning into one larger segment that is perpendicularly facing upwardly um, at the edge of the leaf or at the tip of the leaf. Again, the intention here is to start working the outline of the leaf where we kind of approached uh, forming the leaf with a more drawing style format and then slowly start to fill in the leaf with our golden brown or golden yellow um, coloration and this is where we can start to play around with working in some darker colors um, whilst the leaf is still wet. Um, remember when we are painting leaves or when we're drawing leaves it's always worthwhile considering the medium you are using um, and in the case of painting leaves um, with watercolor integrating some darker colors into the leaf whilst the leaf is still wet is a great way to create tonal variation um, and it's also a very unique and painterly quality that is very specific to the watercolor medium. But otherwise, that is it guys. This is the general process of how to paint leaves. We looked at various leaf species. We covered some techniques and tips on how to use the watercolor medium to create textures and effects within our leaves. If you are interested in any other um, natural related topics or any other watercolor related topics, please let us know in the comment section below. Uh, we love covering topics like this. We're interested in covering topics like this. So if you are interested, please let us know. And also if you found this tutorial helpful, if you learned some things um, throughout this uh, painting process in terms of how to use the watercolor medium and how to use it to create unique effects and textures uh, within a very specific leaf painting, please drop a like, uh, please subscribe 
Um, that just helps us grow the channel and ultimately enables us to make more art content to share with you. But otherwise, guys, that is it from me. Until next time, cheers.